And it is my honor to rise today to support this very important bill, the Minimum Wage Fairness Act of 2014, and very proud of my colleagues who have just spoken. And particularly, I want to say of uh, Senator Shaheen, who is, I understand it, uh, is the only woman here in the Senate who was both a governor and a senator. Is that correct? And when she was a governor, she stood up for the people. And as a senator, she certainly fights for her people. <coughs> and part of this fight involves making sure that when you work hard and you work full time, you don't have to live in poverty. It just isn't fair. Remember, most of the people on the minimum wage are adults. They're not children. They're not teenagers. They're adults. And so many of them are trying to raise their children in jobs at the minimum wage level. And you don't have to be a mathematician to know that the current minimum wage leaves you in poverty. So you have a full-time job, you work your heart out, and you wind up in poverty. Now, I went back into my little memory book, and I found my son's first paycheck when he was working his way through school. And he came in <clears throat> to a supermarket to work as a checkout clerk. And he came into a store called Lucky Stores. They were a union uh, store. <clears throat> so he joined the union. And you know what that young man made in those years? 1986, 28 years ago, it's right here, $7.41 an hour. Imagine. And so he was so proud, he could work hard, and he came home. He was able to help pay for his tuition, for his books. We're talking about a minimum wage that's $10.10 an hour. Here's this young man working as a entry-level checkout clerk at a supermarket in 1986, making over $7 an hour. This minimum wage has got to be raised, Madam President. If you put, in, do we have that chart? If you put inflation on the minimum wage as it was in 1968, just inflation, the minimum wage would be $10.69 an hour. And we're not even going that far. We're saying $10.10 an hour. So all we're suggesting is make sure that inflation is covered. That's all we're saying. Increasing the minimum wage will give people a chance, a fair shot. And remember, most of the people on minimum wage are adults. A lot of folks, if you stop someone in the street and said, who do you think is on the minimum wage? They guess, oh, it's teenagers. No. And by the way, most of those adults happen to be women. Now, I am deeply disappointed and distressed that the Republicans are opposing this measure. Why do Republicans want to deny hardworking Americans a raise? The country supports it overwhelmingly. I don't understand it because in 07, the last time we raised the minimum wage, it was bipartisan. A huge majority of senators then agreed that a full day's work deserved a fair paycheck. The minimum wage in 07, it was during George W. Bush's presidency, let me say that again, the minimum wage in 07, which was the last time we raised it, the increase passed 94 to 3, and George W. Bush signed it into law. What has changed in the Republicans' hearts? What has changed in the Republicans' minds? Are they turning against the people? If you ask them, they'll say, well, it's just not fair to, uh, to small businesses. Well, small businesses, more than 80% of them pay their people more than the minimum wage. So come on. 
and a majority of small businesses support what we're trying to do. So don't come on the floor and say you're, you're opposing this because it's too much too soon, wrong. It's even lower than inflation, the raise. And second, small business doesn't want it when in fact they do. Now, the time before was 1989. We raised the minimum wage then. It was 89 to 8. At that time, it was George H.W. Bush. So wait a minute. What's going on here? They only vote to raise the minimum wage when a Republican's in the White House? I don't get this. It's not about who's in the White House. It's about the working people of this country. Where is the bipartisan spirit? It is gone, and America is paying a heavy price. Minimum wage stuck at 7.25, with inflation eating away every day at it. Let me read you just two stories, two or three stories, about workers. Alicia McCrary, a single mom, she testified in March before the Senate Help Committee. She struggles to support her sons with a minimum wage job in fast food. She has trouble getting them haircuts, shoes, clothing, things that kids need. She says, my boys ask, quote, why isn't there enough money? You work and you work really hard, mom. She said, I don't have a good answer other than I don't get paid enough. She's right. She doesn't get paid a fair minimum wage. NBC ran a news story of a man who works three jobs. Two of them are overnight. He works three jobs. Two of them are overnight jobs for the minimum wage. He said, quote, I have four young children. They need a dad around. That's why I work a day job when they're in school, and then I go back to work when they go to bed. But it takes three jobs to make ends meet because of $7.25 an hour. He says, I'm 43. I have over 20 years experience and I make $7.25 an hour. Madam President, that is wrong. These parents work so hard and their kids are growing up with so little and their parents look in those children's eyes and they, they suffer because they want to do more for their children. Now, economists project that this bill that I hope most well, almost every Democrat will support. Almost every Democrat will support. It would raise the wages of 28 million people in America. All we need is a handful of Republicans to join with us and we get it done. By the way, if it was a majority rule, we would get it done. They're filibustering it, let's be clear. They not only oppose it, they're forcing us to get 60 votes. 20% of the children in America are counting on us. That's 14 million children who would be lifted out of poverty if we pass the Harkin Bill. And tipped workers? If I asked you, anyone in the street, how much do tip workers make, they'd say minimum wage. What most people don't know is the federal tip minimum wage is, and I know, Madam President, you and I have worked on this, $2.13 an hour. Can you imagine $2.13 an hour is the tip minimum wage? And many tip workers live in poverty and instability. They don't know if they'll make enough to cover the bills. Now, what you'll hear is if you pay the full minimum wage, it's too hard on the restaurant owners. I just want to say something. In my state, the tip workers get the full minimum wage, and that wage is... $8 an hour going up to 10 in California. So the tip workers get the minimum wage uh, amount every hour. And guess what? Our restaurants are going gang gangbusters. And guess what else? When you do well and have your minimum wage plus your tips, you can get to go out once in a while to a restaurant. You can go down to the corner store and get something for your children. Sandra Samoa is a bartender in Chicago. She says that if the bar is slow, she could take home just $40 after an eight-hour shift. She lives with her mom and her young son. This woman sleeps on the floor so that her son can sleep in a bed. 
I mean, Madam President, if we don't represent people like this, who the heck do we represent? The Koch brothers? They're worth billions. This woman comes home some days with $40 in her pocket, and her son has to sleep. She sleeps on the floor, and she says, my whole plan, quote, is to have a room for him one day. So listen, if we are who we're supposed to be, the representative of the people and working families, then we want to make sure that we raise the minimum wage. It helps everybody, including those in business. That's why most small businesses support this. The great story of Henry Ford, who raised the day rate of his workers way back in the olden days. And people said, what are you doing? You're raising wages. You could get away with paying them whatever it was. He says, I'm raising them because I want them to buy my car, the cars that we make. Now, I tell you, what you're going to hear on this floor from our colleagues is, we're going too fast. We're raising this too much. I've already shown you we're raising it less than inflation. So that's baloney on its face. Number two, they're going to say, oh, it's going to hurt small business. I've already told you, 82% of small businesses already pay all their employees more than the federal minimum wage, and more than half of them support raising it to 1010 because they know people will spend money on their products and in their stores. Then the next thing they're going to say, it's a job loser. It's a job loser. And they're going to cite one study, which I call an outlier, CBO. It said the minimum wage would reduce employment by three-tenths of 1% over the next two years. Let me tell you, when I heard that, I thought, what is this about? And I looked at some other studies, a study by three prominent labor economists from the University of Massachusetts, University of North Carolina, University of California, Berkeley found that minimum wages absolutely do not cause job losses. And the Economic Policy Institute found that the Harkin bill would increase employment by 84,000 jobs and add 22 billion to our economy. Over what period? Over two and a half years. Let me repeat that. The Harkin bill would increase employment by 84,000 jobs and add 22 billion to our economy. But look, let's look at history. I mean, you have to really ask yourself, these guys and gals who were saying, don't raise the minimum wage, it will lose jobs. What if they said that going back through time and they prevailed? We would never have raised the minimum wage. I worked for the minimum wage a long time ago. At that time, it was a dollar an hour, and I earned 50 cents an hour because I was a teenager, OK? It was great then. I earned 50 cents an hour. I'm looking at the young people here, and they're thinking, you must be really old. They would be right. But my point is, <laughs> the minimum wage was a buck an hour. And it was raised many times. Since 1989, it's been raised three times. It was raised many times before that. Do you know how many? 18 increases since 1956. 18 increases since 1956. So put that in your mind. 18 increases in the minimum wage since 1956. Suppose the other side had taken that attitude. Don't raise it. Well, it would still be, I guess, a buck an hour, 50 cent if, if you were kids. Today, 50 cent is a singing group, right? Am I right about that? OK. So here's where we are. Instead, we've raised the minimum wage over and over and over again. What has happened? The economy has added millions of jobs. Oh, since 1956, it's 80 million, OK? Since 1956, when we started the minimum wage, we have raised the minimum wage 18 times. We have created 80 million new jobs. So if anybody tells you this is a job killer, just say, read the history books. Americans support raising the minimum wage. I hope my colleagues are listening, 
The American people know $7.25 an hour is not enough. A Wall Street Journal NBC poll found that 63% of Americans support raising the minimum wage to 10.10 an hour. Let me say that again. 63% of Americans support raising the minimum wage to 10.10 an hour. So all we need is a handful of Republicans, Madam President. So if they're listening to me, I hope they heard some of my arguments that A, it's good for business to raise the minimum wage because people have more to spend. B, history has shown that we've raised the minimum wage over and over and over again and we've created 80 million jobs. Three, most of the people on the minimum wage are adults. Most of those are women and people are trying to raise their families on the minimum wage. And last point is we have always had strong bipartisan support. When George W. signed it into law, strong support from the Republicans. When his dad was in office, strong support. I can't believe the Republican Party has turned its back on working people, but if they do, we'll find out tomorrow. The American people know what this is about. The American dream is within reach, but you have to have fairness out there. People need a fair shot. We shouldn't tell someone who's a dad he has to work three jobs. That's wrong. We need to lift these workers up and not let them fall behind. When workers do better, families do better. When parents buy their kids enough to eat and shoes to wear, when they can go down and get a haircut at the local barber, when they can put gas in their car or fix up a house just a little, everybody does better. The community does better. Businesses do better. Families can walk tall when we reward hard work. When our workers earn a fair wage, our economy is stronger, our country is better. So let's give American working families a fair shot. We are not asking for the moon and the sun and the stars. All we want is just a little light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you.